Hello, my name is Kieran Hayes and welcome to my video on Luminar Neo and is it any good in 2025? I've been using it for well over three years. Come on, let's get into it and I'll talk you through it all. So what do you get with Luminar Neo? Now of course you get all your usual editing tools like exposure, shadow, highlight controls, contrast, color adjustments, exactly the same as you have in Lightroom for example. In fact, you get a lot more with Neo as there are more fine controls in Luminar Neo for things like smart contrast and sharpening controls too as well, to name just a few of them. Of course you have the brush tool and the gradient filters then too as well in Neo. Now getting back to Luminar Neo's progress over the years and where it is now, I have to say I had a slightly rocky start with Luminar Neo and I was fairly vocal about it at the time, but credit to Skylum, they not only corrected a lot of my concerns, but they kept building and adding to Luminar Neo. And today, I would crazily see Luminar Neo as being one of the top three photography editing software applications out there for photographers. And yes, of course, I am including Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop in my top three with Luminar Neo. And before you say I'm mad, let's just take a look at what you get with Luminar Neo and for almost half the price of Lightroom. Luminar Neo clearly wins out here in two big ways for me personally. The first is its ability to add layers onto the image. So it's gonna give you fantastic control over your editing, which is just absolutely amazing. And secondly then, and more importantly, it's massive feature lists and all the extensions you get with it. And these are the latest improvements in Luminar Neo now. We have improved layer merging. It's now an awful lot easier. We have the improved vignette tool. We have camera star ratings and also support for new camera models. We have updated lens profiles too as well and enhanced scrolling logic on the film strip. And we also have a lot of improvements for presets here too as well. So this is the Luminar Neo interface here now. And on the side here, you can see we have different options with image quality, essentials, landscape, creative, portrait, and professional. And all you simply do is click on one of them to expand it. So I'm gonna click on essentials here now, and let's pop over to the demo screen. These are the main ones. We have Enhance AI, Structure AI, Super Contrast, Composition AI, we have our Develop Panel, we have Color, and we have Dodge and Burn. So if I click on Enhance AI, you can see here now, once the accent slider is slid up along, you can actually see it's after kind of editing our photograph for us. That's before and after there now. Structure AI is our next one here now. So once we go up along here now, you can see it's adding more structure and then we go back down along. So that's the before and afterwards then. Then we have super contrast. So in a couple of seconds, we can adjust our highlights contrast, our highlights balance, our midtones contrast, midtones balance, shadows contrast and shadows balance to get exactly the photograph we want. And that's the before and after there now. Next then we have Composition AI. But if I go down here and click on Composition AI, it's gonna automatically suggest the best composition for the photograph. So you can see it's, it's helping to obey more of the rule of thirds. Our Develop tab then we can adjust our exposure, smart contrast, highlights, shadows, blacks, and whites then too as well, of course. We can go down and adjust our levels here too as well with our histogram in the background. And then we also have our color control. So we can adjust our color temperature, or tint, or saturation, vibrancy, and you can just see the before and after effect there now straight away. Then we also have our HSL sliders too as well, so we can play around with the colors to get the exact look we're looking for with our HSL controls. So with Dodge and Burn then, we can adjust the amount of, or the intensity of Dodge and Burn, we've light and darken, and with the brush tool, you can see just running over the actual owl here now itself, and when we zoom back out long here now, when it's all finished in long, you can see how much of a difference that's after making. And we look at before and afterwards, there's a massive difference there now. And you can vary the amount too as well, if you want. Then for landscape photographers out there, we have our landscape section and we have Sky AI. So we can go over here then and select the sky we want to fit in with whatever mood we want. We say this is the one we want here now. So we can adjust the horizon position. We can adjust the vertical position and we can also adjust the horizontal position to get it exactly the way we want to frame our image nicely. Then we can adjust our reflection coming off the water, and we can also go down here then to scene relighting so that the coloring of the sky fits in with the image a bit more. The next one of our landscape tools then is golden hour. We just adjust the golden hour slider here now, 
and it's going to naturally boost all those lovely golden tones and we can pop in dehaze and this is our before and afterwards completely transforming the photograph in a split seconds then we have atmosphere ai we can superimpose different elements onto the photograph in this one now we fog so if i adjust the amount slider you can see it with and without the fog there now and there's using 3d depth mapping so it knows when i adjust the depth here i can position it on the image and that's before and afterwards completely crazy stuff your dehaze slider then it just simply takes the haze out of the image itself as you can see here it takes seconds to apply really simple really easy to do the next one we have here is sun rays then so what we can do is we can adjust the amount and then place the sun center so if i go over here place the sun center i can move it around so that is actually going to give you light rays coming at different angles and this is all done through ai it's absolutely brilliant look at that that is absolutely mind-blowing twilight enhancer ai is the next one then so we can just adjust the amount and you can see how that's changing the color temperature here now and it just looks completely different and we can also select from different colors to fit in with the mood we're actually looking for and that's before and afterwards water enhancer ai is the last one in the landscape section for now anyway so if i go over here to amount and slide the slider up along it's going to change the color of the water and this is all automatically masked and this is how easy it is to do this it takes seconds that's the before and after so creative is the next one now we have color transfer real light ai magic light ai moods filters and lots neon and glow film grain and overlays so if i just show you color transfer here now first so what we do is we go here to our reference selection and select the photograph and we say if it's this one it will actually transfer the coloring from that photograph over to this one we can adjust the amount and the color intensity luminosity intensity do all those things if we want but look at that it takes seconds real light ai uses 3d depth mapping in Again. so what i can do is get brightness near and just slide that up along and it's going to brighten our model but the brightness inside in the back here is not changing that's before and afterwards there now you can see there's very little difference here but it's adjusting the actual model itself magic light ai then so you can see we have a few different light sources one here 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 and here so if i go over here now and adjust the intensity you can see how it's adding starbursts to the image and you can change the number of beams to as well or the number of starbursts coming off and the rotation you can do just so much with this in split seconds and it just adds some lovely details to your photographs then we have moods filters and lots not really ai but it kind of works a small bit like it in ways so over here we have mood we can choose the lot the amount the contrast and the saturation so if i choose the lot here now i can pop down to cinematic toning and let's say we want to pick something like riverside and you can adjust the amount the contrast and the saturation and if you want and that's before and afterwards neon and glow then is the next one so over here in the neon and glow panel you can actually draw in neon lights over a subject so you can basically draw in and highlight specific sections that you want to be highlighted as kind of like a neon glow to the actual photograph that looks good now you can adjust the amount the atmosphere the spread and the U of the light too as well, or the whiteness too as well. So film grain AI. So what we do is just slide up the amount there. Now you can see the actual film grain being applied. Then you have your size and you have your roughness. And this is before and afterwards. Finally, then the last one we have in the creative section is overlays AI. So if we just go up here to add layers and we can go down here to flares, we can go to light leaks, but we click on light leaks here now. And you can see it just adds a lovely light leak into the photograph itself. Then that, that's the before and afterwards there now. So for the portrait photographers out there, we have skin AI, face AI, body AI, portrait bokeh AI, we have studio light, we have portrait background, and we have high key. Over here then we have skin AI, we have two controls. We can adjust the amount and also shine removal so if we go to shine removal here now let's say first for example it's going to help remove the shine off our subject then we need to smoothen out the skin give it a second and there we go that's looking a lot better that's before that's after and you also have skin defects removal ai too as well if you want next we have face ai so the first thing we do is face lighting to brighten the face small bit change the eye color the iris flare eye enhancer dark circle removal then we do lip saturation, lip redness, and lip darkening a small bit before and afterwards. That takes you about a minute to do. Absolutely scary how good that is. Next then we have body AI. And body AI is for helping improve a person's shape. So what I do is just adjust the shape up along and it slims the person in a small bit. And the abdomen then helps to reduce the belly just a small bit just if it really was a very bad photograph again this is something i would use very sparingly though portrait bokeh ai i absolutely love this so you can just adjust the amount slider up along 
and it's going to change the perceived depth of field via the 3D mapping. I can adjust the brightness, the highlights glow, and the background to get it looking the way I want it and say, oh my god, that's absolutely perfect there now. And this is our before, and this is our afterwards now. And again, it takes seconds to do this. Studio light then, and basically we can have a light shining from different angles with different effects. There's an awful lot in this, and it's there's too much for this video. I actually have another video up on this, so I'll leave a link for that in the description down below if you want to look at it. If you adjust the amount here now, you can, you can completely change the lighting in your photograph in seconds. And the best part is you can adjust the angle of the light. So I can place the light up here. I can place it down here. I can place it over here. Again, check out the other video I have on Studio Light AI. There's a lot more information in that. Portrait background then, as you may guess, this is very straightforward again. And what it's basically going to do is help you swap out the background in your photograph. So what we can do is go up here to layer properties and masking, and then we can select portrait background and give it two seconds. It's going to analyze the background and it's going to be able to separate the background from the people themselves. And that's basically it. You can remove the background completely from the photograph and drop in another background if you want. Incredibly simple, but shit, very, very fast. Then we have high key here and over here in high key, we have amount, standard high key, dynamic high key and blacks. And there's also advanced settings. But if we adjust the amount here now, and then we can adjust the standard high key, dynamic high key, and the blacks to get the exact look we're looking for. And that's the before and afterwards. Next, we have generative AI and we have generate, gen expand and gen swap. And let's say looking at photographs like this here. Now we say, look, the tent there, does it actually fit in with what we want in the image? It kind of does and it does. And maybe I like a photograph with the tent and also without the tent. Simply paint over the actual subject you want to remove, like the tent here now, and that little bit of white plastic down below there and give it a couple of seconds and it's going to do a fairly good job. Now, is it absolutely perfect? Maybe not, but it's something that's getting better and better and better with every single update. For me, that does a fairly good job in a couple of seconds. Gen expand then is for when you take a photograph, you're thinking, oh, actually, I would have preferred to have more of the bird in this shot here now. So how do you fix that? Well, you can go into gen expand and simply pull out long your canvas here on this side, click on Gen Expand and to get it to work and give it a couple of seconds and it's gonna do a reasonably good job. Is it always gonna come out as good as that? No, it's not. You can get some weird side effects sometimes and that is absolutely perfect, I must admit there though. That is mind-blowingly good. The next one we have here is Gen Swap. Now, there's a few parts of this image that are just a small bit flat, I suppose you could say. We can brush over the area here now in Gen Swap and we can type in a prompt in that we want it to be replaced with something else like Big Waves, for example. So simply brush over it, type in Big Waves, and give it a couple of seconds for it to work its magic. Now, is the foreground wave here perfect? No, it's not. It is a bit too bright and the color tone doesn't quite suit the image. But again, the brush tool, adding a layer, you can actually change that. Then we can add a small bit more interest in the sky too as well by swapping out the sky then too as well. And now we have image quality. And for me, this is by far and away the best part of Luminar Neo because we have super sharp AI, noiseless AI, and upscale AI, all included as standard and for free in your Luminar Neo subscription. Normally you'll be paying a third party software, third party company, $100 to $150 a year for these three little applications. And they're all actually built into Luminar Neo so you don't need to export the photographs and then re-import them when they're finished. It's all done, there's no plugins. It's actually built into the software itself. So Super Sharp AI, what does it do? You can see this photograph, for example, the focus is roughly around right, but the shutter speed was too slow, so the image is blurred. Now, over here, we have universal. So what type of blurring is there? It's universal blurring, we'll say. We can select low, middle, or high. So for argument's sake, we'll select middle. Now, this is sped up a small bit. It does take maybe three to five seconds for it to process the image, but that's before and afterwards. That is frighteningly good. Then we also have noiseless AI. And over here in noiseless AI, you can see advice, use the middle adjustment for this image. So that's actually giving you prompts now too as well. So if you click on middle here now, again, this is sped up. It's going to take a couple of seconds and it's going to help reduce the noise. And finally, in the image quality section, we have upscale AI. Simply drag and drop the image into upscale AI and you can select two, four or six times enlarging and it's going to enlarge the image for you then. Finally then we have photo merge, we have HDR merge, panorama stitching and focus stacking. So on HDR merge basically what we do is we go over here to HDR merge, we select that 
drag all three photographs into HDR merge and it's going to automatically merge them for us. And there we go, that's our end result. Panorama stitching then is very similar. We open panorama stitching and then we drag and drop all the photographs we want into the actual panorama stitching application. And when you do that, there's a few different options and settings here you can click on and then you click on start and it's going to merge those photographs into one for you. And that's looking kind of good enough there now. So you can click on continue and then crop and it's going to automatically crop it for you. And that's it. That's our photograph done. Finally, then we have focus stacking. As with the other ones, we just need to select the photographs we want, open focus stacking and drop them all in, click on start. And what it's going to do is it's going to stack all the images together into one to give you absolutely incredible depth of field. So overall, I think Luminar Neo is not only the best photography editing platform, out there right now for value for money and for features but it's just super simple to use and just so fast having all these tools in just one app with no extra yearly costs is fantastic for anyone starting out in photography or seasoned professionals as i say it just speeds up my workflow having everything in the one application not having to send files backwards and forwards between different apps so absolutely love that now i'm not saying luminar neo is by far the best and it's perfect for you, but it most certainly has to be in the top three for everyone now. But what are your thoughts in it? Would you swap to Luminar Neo? What do you use and why? Um, so yeah, thanks again for watching and see you out there or see you in the next video, everyone.